And apparently Orphan Drift was part of the new aesthetic in the 90s. Dan, thank you for that. Um, we were completely white label, very influenced by underground music and um, a hive mind, which consisted of four people who completely subsumed their individual identities. And we produced a lot of work that um, we're now collecting into Orphan Drift archive website because we realized we'd got so underground that, for example, last year, no, this year, our book was republished without us knowing. Um, and, and, but we did manage to salvage the situation. But we've been working um, no longer all based in London, but from various places all over the world. I'm currently in um, a tiny studio at the bottom of um, South Africa, and the main other Orphan Drift person still working is in San Francisco following a, a fairly successful individual artist career. So we still collaborate a lot, and I'm going to show you a video um, made between 2009 and 10, and shown in Sa um, Santiago and San Francisco and London so far. And um, I just want to do a small intro to it. So, a wilderness of elsewheres describes miscegenation between human production and geologic time, primitive and contemporary technology. There is an awkward temporality in the combination of still and moving, animation and video, unapologetic collage, and fluid organic texture. The tundra, ice flows, burns, flotsam and jetsam, all filmed in South Africa, have an elegiac sublime tone, prolif proliferating landscapes of aftermath, still and unyielding. The audio carries with it the persistent sense of an event. Architecture and clothing become sculptural. Collage becomes a way of thinking about edges cutting cloth to fit a body or making a building to carve out space. It points to what happens at the edges of things and to the history of pictorial landscape as an invention by framing. At once immersive and deconstructive, the work is a collusion, cohabitation and evolutionary fever dream. It, the main um, trajectory behind it is science fiction and the liminal. And I quote from a book, The Trickster in West Africa, by A.G. Pelton. Liminality is a positional as well as a temporal phenomenon. It is symbolic of the liminal state itself and of its permanent accessibility. A matrixial border space, a catalyst for social and individual transformation. It can overlook the usual requirements of biology, economics, socius, even metaphysical possibility, in order to posit radically altered limits. A wilderness of elsewhere suggests science fictional journeys encoding an alien time frame, whether future or past. Futuristic, survivalist, nomadic, and space travel elements blink in and out of existence in the inhuman, raw, beautiful scapes of Southern Africa. They posit haunted futures. They exist as interventions, moments on a surface. Connections, threads, virtual fluid, flexing matter. There are intimations of the Atlantis myth operating as a feedback loop, unconscious software for a race that brings about its own destruction by time and time travels into the future to make it all happen again. For us to dream the future, to channel a predictive mirror, science fiction and technology become tools such as magic once was for transformation. Post-apocalyptic hauntings. We colonize experimental realities, weaving space, time, and matter into fluid temporary configurations that are essentially science fictional. Science fiction is produced out of cultural necessity, a liminal presence that inhabits prediction and flux, resisting containment. This is the liminal, always slippery and ambiguous, dissolving boundaries and opening horizons. It is the connection between the potentially and actually human.